Welcome back friends. Now that we have created a facility where user can enter a number to start shopping, the next step logically is to create a shopping cart. Now remember shopping cart is really like a cart in the supermarket. What really happens is that the moment user wants to buy something, we put that in the shopping cart and we also register how many units of that particular thing the user wants to purchase. Now, before starting to write any code in this video, I want to give you an overview of the list interactions that will happen in this project. We are going to deal with multiple lists, so it's helpful if we take a top level view first before we start writing any code. And that's what I want to do in this video. Now, remember when we first start, we have got two lists. One is the menu, one is the price. The menu contains all the items that are available to be sold in our shop. So in this case, we have five items. That's why menu is a list which goes from zero to four in, in terms of the index. And all the menu items are strings because these are basically names of the items that we are selling. The list price is the price of all these items in say whatever currency you are dealing with. Remember, we are just putting the number here. Uh, the price is could be in any currency. Now, price also is a list of the same length as menu as we have seen before because there's a perfect correspondence between the menu and the price, which means, for example, the price of milkshake is 99.99, price of eclairs is 37.99 per unit and so on and so forth. Now, this list price has got numbers which have decimal places and hence they are all floating point numbers or say floats in short. The important point is that these two lists are populated in the very beginning. We have seen that earlier and their contents do not change during the program, which means this is what my shop has to offer and this does not change as the program goes on. However, as the user starts to purchase stuff, we are going to create two more lists. We are going to call one the shopping cart and the next one the shopping quant. Now, the idea behind this list is that in this shopping cart, just like, like I said, a trolley in a supermarket, we are going to list down all the items that the user is going to purchase. For example, user might purchase milkshake, ice cream, chocolate, eclairs in whatever order. But the moment the user makes a purchase, we are going to update that in this list shopping cart. Also, we are going to keep track of how many units the user wants to purchase through this list called shopping quant, so quantity. Now, in our program here, the you know the, the the number of items is limited to five which means that my shopping cart can at most be five elements that's why i've just written zero one two three four because user can either purchase one of these five also notice that my shopping quantity here has to be an integer only and why is that because we are dealing with number of units so user wants say one unit of shop a milkshake say three units of chocolates uh, eclairs and so on and so forth so there's no right now in this game the way it's set up it is not possible for user to go and purchase say three and a half um, chocolate or something like that. Hence, our list shopping quant is going to be all integers because remember this will be numbers without any decimal place, without any fractional part, hence no decimal place and hence they are pure integers. The important bit also is that these lists are populated as the shopping is happening, which means that their contents change as the program runs. Now, contrast this with these two lists. These two lists have been created once. The menu and the price, they do not change. They stay sort of stationary. These lists, however, evolve as the user, uh, you know, um, makes the choices. Let's take an example of this. Uh, so, like I said, menu and price are there for us. In the beginning, we start with empty lists. I'll show you how to do that in code. But we have, let's say, nothing in these lists. Let's say user purchases three units of milkshake. So, what we are going to do is that in this list shopping cart, we are going to add milkshake and since user wants to purchase three units in the shopping quant we are going to add three units notice this will be an addition uh, this will be an operation where we are going to change the contents of this list uh, we'll see how to do that later but this is what we are going to do next remember the purchase the shopping goes on until user presses six let's say next user purchases five units of eclairs in this case what we are going to do is that we are going to add to this list eclairs notice again the shopping cart changed because previously we had milkshake now we have also got eclairs also we are going to list down the amount which means say in this case five units since the user wants five units of eclairs we put here 
five units. Now, at the end of this operation, my shopping cart and shopping quant will look something like this. Now, let's say the user comes back and says, hey, look, I want four more units of my eclairs. So what's going to happen? Again, we are going to add this to the shopping cart. However, since eclairs is already present in this list, all we need to do is that user previously wanted five. Now we will add five plus four and we make it nine. Now, so this list shopping cart and shopping quant will keep evolving as the user uh, you know, um, enters more and more things. At some point, user will say, I'm done. And that point, you know, this list will, um, let's say, uh, that's it. That's, this list will be in the final form of the, um, of the project, right? Now, at this point, we, uh, like I said, this is an overview. I think this is quite helpful. This gives us a visualization uh, because this is really like shopping from a supermarket, right? So supermarket has some number of things to sell us. As we fill up our shopping cart, the shopping cart keeps changing. We are going to do a lot of coding to get to this point. To, to say it has this moves but for this video i'm just going to create my two lists shopping cart and shopping quant and assign them to empty lists which means that these are lists which have been created but no items whatsoever have been added to them because like i said in the beginning everything is completely empty when it comes to shopping cart and shopping quant so all i need to do in terms of python coding is that i can just create now remember creating lists is very easy i can say shopping say cart is an empty set of square brackets and i can also say shopping say quant is also another set of empty brackets the important bit here is the square brackets and with this in fact we are done uh, you know uh, compare this to scratch it's actually much simpler there we would have to create a list uh, probably delete everything in the beginning but here by just writing the statement Middle of the code, we have in fact told the interpreter that we want to create a list. And right now this list is there, but it is empty because the shopping cart and shopping quant are both empty at this point of time. Now in the next few videos, we are going to build on the shopping cart using the ideas that we just discussed. Uh, however, we we'll break here for now. Take a moment to understand the scheme because this scheme is pivotal to understanding the logic that's being used later on. If you're clear with your mind about what is to be done, then the code will become a logical, you know, let's say, um, extension of whatever we are drawing here. Uh, I hope this was useful. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.